Your Wi-Fi runs on the same frequency as your microwave oven. Your microwave operates at 2.45 gigahertz, which is 2.45 billion cycles per second. It's the same exact frequency that's used by your Wi-Fi router, all of your Bluetooth devices, the smart meter on the side of your house, and your cell phone, which goes up to 2.7 gigahertz, 2.45 included. What this means is that every time you put your phone up to your ear, you're treating your brain like it's a bowl of microwavable beefaroni from Chef Boyardee. And when you hang up the call and put your phone back in your pocket, you're treating your scrotum like it's a bag of Orville Redenbacher popcorn. And this habit of slow cooking your brain and your balls has plenty of well-documented health effects. For example, multiple studies have shown an increased risk of brain tumors, especially on the same side of the head where people place their cell phone. In addition to this, sperm exposed to RF radiation show decreased motility and decreased viability. And ladies, you're not off the hook for treating your tits like they're two steak and cheddar hot pockets. And the worst part is, our government has known about all of these health effects for decades. In fact, back in 1972, the Naval Medical Research Institute published this document that cites over 2,300 references on the biological responses to radio frequency and microwave radiation. These biological responses include things like headaches, insomnia, seizures, fatigue, and death. So clearly, the government is aware that microwave radiation is dangerous. That's why the FCC has safety guidelines in the first place. Unfortunately for us, these safety guidelines haven't been updated since 1996 and are based on very short-term exposure to one device. So if you want to be safe and still keep your cell phone, you're going to have to get rid of your laptop, your iPad, your AirPods, your Apple Watch, your Google Home, your smart TV, your smart thermostat, your smart refrigerator, your smart dishwasher, your smart clothes dryer, your smart baby monitor, and your high-tech Bluetooth panini press. And if we keep connecting all of our everyday devices and appliances to the internet, we're going to create what's called an Internet of Things, where almost every single item in the house will radiate harmful electromagnetic frequencies. So before we go too far down that road, we should stop and ask ourselves if it's necessary to have a Wi-Fi enabled dildo that can play Spotify and order Pad Thai on Uber Eats. I understand that it's convenient. But is that convenience worth cancer on your G-spot? Because the health implications will only get worse with the next generation of networks, otherwise known as 5G. And to say that 5G is just the new version of 4G is a little misleading, because as you can see, we're jumping from around 3 gigahertz up to 71, which seems like a pretty big leap. I mean, we're getting into much, much higher frequencies. 
And these higher frequencies fall into what's called the millimeter wave range. Now, millimeter waves are known to penetrate human skin and cause pain. In fact, the U.S. Department of Defense knows very well that millimeter waves cause pain because it uses these extremely high frequencies in crowd control weapons known as the Active Denial System, or ADS. The ADS has the ability to cause a severe burning sensation that feels almost as if the skin might catch on fire. This is why the military has nicknamed this weapon the Pain Ray. And the Pain Ray uses the same millimeter wave technology as the 5G cellular network that's being rolled out all over the world as I speak. This means that we're consenting to the deployment of a slightly modified military weapon system. And just because this particular weapon system is sold by Verizon and allows you to download high definition cartoon porn where Captain Crunch goes down on Toucan Sam doesn't mean that it's not a weapon system. All it means is that 5G is a weapon system that has viral videos of otters on boogie boards. You gotta wake up. Don't slap snooze.